Oi, baboy. I need to get my work done. Okay, I'm going to leave her for a bit and I want to show you this pattern. The 90s are back. I saw Trinity from Trinity and Suzanne today on YouTube and she was wearing the most amazing pair of dark blue wide-legged pants. And then I remembered I had this pattern. So I'm going to cut out a pair. pocket facing in this and I'm going to do bias binding to put around the waistband and also it makes the pockets not so big I'll cut the little knippies tomorrow but it is time to go to bed in my previous life I would have worked until it was done and not get enough sleep but I'm not there anymore it's time there you can see the time 20 past 8 so I'm gonna brush my teeth and get ready for bed good morning it's five o'clock and I woke up naturally and we have load shedding Low chilling now from 5 and 7.30 when I leave for work. This is why I don't get stuff done. Anyway, I'm not going to let low chilling get me down. So as I said last night, I cut this out. But what happens when you go to sleep? You come up with ideas. So this one's back. It's just normal. I want this to look like denims. So I'm going to give it that denim V at the back. I have this pair of denims that I really like. And I'm just going to copy that. And another thing, I see that this is a curved waistband. Curved waistbands just fit so much nicer, so I'm actually going to do that as well. So the light's low, because I'm working with my emergency light. I copied that, and I've now put it on here. It fits like this. And then when you cut the denim, you must remember to fold up the seam allowance, so that you have seam allowance for your denim as well. So I draw a line where I need to cut, and I'm going to cut now. Oh my goodness, it's difficult to see. Look at him asking for cuddles. <laughs> of course he's wet. He loves running around in the rain. Let me cut the inset in the back for the denims and then I'm going to cut the base band. I've cut, this is the back one and I'm going to cut another one of that. And this is the front. What I did is I put my pants down, pin the pockets in place and I just draw a waistband for that. Now I don't have a very narrow waist so for me I just need a bit of a curve but I know if you have quite a hourglass figure then you might need to make the curve of your waistband much more. Always cut a double layer because your waistband will have a front part and a back part. I'm going to make the pockets that size. So you take your chalk and you literally just go on the line or where the pocket, you can feel the pocket and you will see it makes a clear line where the pocket is. And then you can just do your seam allowances afterwards. There's my pocket. 6.30 and that's cut out and all the pattern markings are sorted and I've done the waistband. And so, when the power comes back, because this afternoon, I get home at 2.30, usually, and the power will only come back at 3.30. I'm so thankful my light went, and my friend was in town, so she got me another light. So I can actually see where I'm working, especially with the dark fabric. That's my pet peeve. When I take a bobbin out, and it actually falls, and runs the whole room full, and then just unravel, or unwind. Oh, I hate that. Go. Then we're going to do this. I'm quickly going to sew these two things together. We are having load shedding at nine. So let's see how much we can get done. So the first thing is this part. I just had to unpick because I forgot to hold my cotton before I started. So whenever you sew, you'll put your foot down, the machine foot, when you hold the cotton at the back. That way it doesn't pull in. Now the bonino are quite nice, they don't really pull in, but you know when you have the bobbin on top, those ones are so finicky. If you don't hold it, they pull in and then you have a big mess. Always remember when you start, hold your cotton, don't pull it, just hold it so it doesn't pull back here. And also that prevents the cotton from pulling through the needle. Another thing is when you start that little thing, always make sure it's at the top. So some electronic ones have a mechanism that makes sure that your looper is always at the top. If your looper is at the top, it means your cotton won't pull out. 
And I always go back and forth because that helps it from not pulling loose. Both of them are sewn together. And now I'm going to sew the middle to get first overlock and then sew the middle together. So for the back, I'm going to fold it that way. But we have this and that seam where we got them together. So it's very thick. And then when you fold it this way, you also have this. So I'm going to cut this one away like that. It takes away a lot of that bulk. So it's going to get overlocked. And then when I do my top stitching, this will be folded this way and I will sew it down. Top stitching time. So I have this denim top stitching cotton. And what I do, I change my needle to a bigger needle. So I always have my needles that's like almost blunt but not completely. I put them up here and I will use them for this types of jobs. Your needles are very important. If you don't use the right needles, it will skip stitches if your needles aren't right or it will break the cotton. That happens to me often. So this is one of the things that my top stitching does, which I can kind of find very irritating. So I need to now adjust this until I get it right. So we're going to do a few of these just to make sure that the tension is right. So you can see there, it's it's still coming through a little bit, but it's much better than it was there. And I don't mind that so much because it's not going to scratch me. <laughs> so part of the reason why I don't like the top stitching coming through is because that will irritate me. Oh my goodness, that will really irritate me. I would actually not wear it if it's like that. So I need to make sure my top stitching does not scratch me. <laughs> This is my frustration. The power is off. You can hear the inverter going beep. So <laughs> I'm going to go and sleep now for two hours until the power comes back on. And then I'll come and do it some more. I'll see you later. Good morning. I'm back. I did not get up at 12 or 1 or 2 o'clock. I was tired, so I slept. This is one thing you have to remember. You cannot function at your best if you do not get enough sleep. I used to not sleep enough. If I was lucky, I would get five hours and I had major burnout. I'm not doing that to myself anymore. So let's keep going and make my pants. But I first want to show you. She's not ready to get up. I felt like that last night when the alarm went off. The pants are exactly where I left them. I was almost halfway with my top stitching. I'm usually quite good at stitching a straight line. It's not something I struggle with. But I really want these to be, this pair of pants to be really professional. So I'm using this foot. It's got a little metal bar in the middle that keeps the machine sewing right next to the middle seam. Because this bar is pushing against that middle seam and then the needle is a little bit to the right. And that's my first line. Now for the second line, I would take my zipper foot for the next one. So the nice thing also with the zipper foot is you can put it next to the line. I really want it to be perfect or as perfect as I can get it. So I'm just going to go, keep going. Top stitching is done. I'm really happy with it. And there's the inside. And now I'm going to do the top part. pockets I've now measured that distance I was we're going to make them quite a little smaller but I think I want a bigger pocket so this pocket is curved on the edges so I'm going to do the little triangle clips before I fold it over and iron it flat something to remember when you do pockets I'm going to do two lines of top stitching so that means this is all going to be encased in that top stitching so you don't need to overlock this folds in perfectly but first, I need to fold over and iron it. And I'm folding it over on the line that I stitched. I've sewed them down with normal cotton and now I'm going to do the top stitching for that part and for the hem of the top. I have pockets 
and I am now going to pin them on to my pants. But first, especially with top stitching, I don't like to reverse. I pull it through and it helps if you use a needle and then I just make a knot. And then you cut the threads. That way it won't unravel on that side or on the back, but you don't have that up and down, which I usually have when I sew. We are now going to pin these pockets on the back of the pants. To find where I want them, I have these shorts. So I will be using them as a guide. Let those lines connect. There's that corner. And I'm going to pin this one in place. And then I will fold it double and do that one. Do the other side. Make sure my knippies meet up. And I'm just going to find where those are. Yes. Perfect. I can now go and sew them down. Pockets are on the butt. I'm going to love these pants. Make sure your needle goes a little bit to that side. When I get to the end, so I'm now at the edge, I've taken this foot off. So just go up and slide it in. And now I'm going to just zigzag a little bit back and forth. Till I get back to the edge. Then I'm going to go back to straight stitching. Stitch length back to normal. Turn it. So remember I sewed it down before. So I'm going to just make sure I sew up until that line that I've sewed before. There we go. And now I'm turning my pants. Move my needle over to that side. And I'm going to use the outside of my straight stitch foot as my guide. Now I prefer my top stitching to be really neat and tidy. So I'd rather take a bit extra time than to rush through it and have it a bit wobbly. I'm now there at the beginning again. And I'm going to take my loose piece of cotton that I've started with, pull it down, put my machine on zigzag, make sure I move my needle back to the middle. My machine is on zigzag two and my stitch length is on one. And I'm going to zigzag it down and catch the thread at the bottom. Just keep on catching this thread. And then when I'm down for a little bit, I'm going to reverse. And then I can cut this off and it's not going to go anywhere. Again, I don't cut my thread. I keep a long strip tail because I'm going to pull it through. I'm quite excited. I've just realized I have buttons that I can use and they fit with my rivets. And I've discovered five more packets of rivets so I can make a mistake without worrying. First step, make your hole. Then I make my hole. On the other side. Okay. So my hole is there. And I'm going to push my hardware through like that, and then that goes over. And now we're going to hammer. So my table is quite sturdy, so I will be like that. I always put a piece of fabric over it like that. And I'm going to try it with this. I don't know if it's going to work, we'll see. Mm, didn't work, just went right through. Let's try again. Oh, I'm so frustrated. All the fasteners, of, I remember now I bought these and I've been struggling with them ever since and that's why I stopped using them. But all these stupid fasteners, you're supposed to put it in and then put fabric, turn it around and hit it on the back. And it doesn't pop and then that, this little thing is supposed to like pop out and it doesn't. I have just wasted so many and I've messed up my pants so I'm going to undo this. In the past I've used these. I'm just going to use them because this is not working. Stupid things. So this is something that a lot of seamstresses don't tell you or a lot of sewers. It doesn't always go through smooth sailing and I found that YouTube and I do, I'm guilty of that too. Oh wrong way around. With YouTube it's we edit and we take out try and make the video the right length or to convey a story but we don't always show how long it really takes so i've just spent 45 minutes trying to get this done and i was not successful and that's the reality you don't always get the things done in the time that you want to do it or even if you thought it was not going to take that long it usually takes longer and sewing is hard work now when i do this i like to just push them over that little bar 
and then you have that tool there and I'm not supposed to use this one but I prefer this one and you can buy these that these things at any like fabric store or even hobby store and then the whole hollow part goes over and the flat part goes in the back and you use violence and push it close until you feel it you will feel it like clicks in or not click it like it's there's a feeling it's like a release when it goes in and these won't go anywhere they are there now forever my hardware for the first bucket is in close up of the rivets and the top stitching it's not as yellow as it is on the camera it's more a gold color and i've ironed it and it's ready to put together with the fronts but the front still needs to be made up and needle and sew this thread to the inside line i've used this foot again it's like playing russian roulette and never know if there's a bullet 